to the Royal Daily Tea YouTube channel, please be advised all of my videos are for entertainment purposes only, based 100% on my own opinion, my own theories, and my own research. All of my information can be found on the public domain and falls under the fair use guidelines. Please feel free to do your own research. Hello and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. We have a lot of topics to cover today, so we're just going to dive right in. So sit back and relax and get ready for the Royal Daily Tea. So as we know, Meghan and Harry, they're out trying to cover the stories with their positive PR fluff because we all know that Pearl has been canceled. Well, word on the street, according to Royal commentator Neil Sean, is that they're now shopping around for another streaming network to house the undeveloped Pearl. According to Neil Sean, is ITV, the British free-to-air television network. Now, in my opinion, that would be a horrible choice to make, considering the fact that Meghan and Harry have about a 35% approval rating across the UK. I cannot imagine anyone wanting to watch Pearl in the UK of all places. In America, they would honestly would have a better chance, maybe. But in the UK, talk about the kiss of death. So I don't know how true that is. That is a story that he has been reporting. But again, that's very interesting to find out. Now, according to Neil, he does say that the new people who are in charge of the network are part of the woke brigade, you know, the people who support Harry and Meghan. Uh, so that could be why they're trying to, you know, get a deal with the Sussexes and get Pearl on their network. Again, it's going to be very interesting to see if anyone actually picks up this show. In my opinion, Pearl is never going to see the light of day, but I could be wrong, but I really don't see it happening. I really don't. I think Pearl is dead in the water, much like most of the Sussex's projects. So another big story is that Megan's big web relaunch hits a huge snag when she fails to sign her trademark application. Now, we know that Meghan Markle, before she was married to Prince Harry, ran the lifestyle blog, The Teague, and it was trademarked. Richard Eden from the Daily Mail reported that Meghan Markle failed to relaunch her website, The Teague, as she failed to sign her trademark reactivation application. The Suits actress was forced to ditch it when she married into the royal family, and she marked major speculation when last September she applied to reactivate the Teague trademark. Now, I've talked about how I felt that her reactivating the Teague website two years ago when she first left the royal family would have been the best thing for her to do if they would have stayed away from all of the politics all of the woke speeches and just quietly went into launching the Teague, it might have actually turned out to be a success because that was something that she was, you know, known for before she became a royal. She could have had a lot of brand deals. She could have merged all her clothing. She might have made some real money and people might have been more open to a lifestyle blog without all of the hoopla of her trying to get into politics, without all of her speeches. And of course, if she wouldn't have done the Oprah Winfrey interview. But now, since she's done all that, in my opinion, she's never going to be a success at any brand. But again, if they would have just went right into the Teague, right after Megxit and quietly kept their head down and didn't get involved in anything, didn't make any statements, she might have actually been a success. But apparently, she doesn't know how to sign an application. And according to Richard Eden, the Patent Trade Office also said that her description of her website for her trademark was too broad. It looks like she's trying to cover a variety of topics, which again, that's actually not true. I do have two trademarks, or I did have two trademarks for a clothing and a skincare line, and you can definitely put what your trademark would cover. Now, in the detailed selection of subjects, Megan was planning to cover food, cooking, recipes, travel, relationships, fashion, style, lifestyle, the arts, culture, 
uh, design, conscious living, health, and wellness. So when I did my trademark for my clothing, I had one for clothing, and I had to have a separate one for skincare that would cover perfume and makeup and that type of thing. And they were both approved because you're allowed to have subcategories. So again, apparently the U.S. Trade Office did not like her description, and they told her she now has to wait six months to reapply for her trademark. So it's going to be very interesting if she actually is able this time to go through and get approved. Now we do know she most recently uh, put in an application to trademark the work archetypes. Again, uh, that's a very popular word. However, she is trademarking the word for a podcast. I do not believe there is another podcast with that name. So she could very well get the name archetypes for a podcast because when you have a trademark it is very specific so if i had a clothing line that was called pure love it wasn't that means that no one else could have a clothing line with that word however if somebody sold hair extensions or maybe it was a restaurant called pure love i technically couldn't sue them because it wasn't in the same category with which i owned the name now, if it was something very similar, it could possibly work. And when I had a trademark, I was able to get rid of quite a few people who were trying to use my name because a trademark holds a lot of weight. It's like I can't do a, a shoe line and call it Coca-Cola. I mean, I probably could, but because there's such a huge globally known a company that does have a clothing line. They have Coca-Cola t-shirts and sweatshirts. Shoes might fall under that category. I would probably lose that battle because Coca-Cola has branded themselves in several different categories. So a lot of people gave her a hard time about uh, trademarking it, but if she specifically did it for podcasting, it might go through, but she cannot sue people for a t-shirt or a restaurant or other things unless she trademarks it in several different categories. So it's going to be a very hard word to own in my opinion. Now the final story that I'm gonna talk about today, this is the most hilarious story. If you don't know the Royal Grift, she does amazing work. She is Keep New York City Mega Trash Free. She has a very deep dive into the background of this story that I really think you should go and watch. She talks about who she believes is behind this PR fluff piece of a story, but I think it's pretty obvious. The story is from the Express. It's called U.S. Poll Shock Support for President Megan Growing as Biden Loses Ground with Voters. I can guarantee you nobody in America would ever vote for Meghan Markle to be the United States president. In my opinion, she couldn't even be the president of the PTA board in Montecito. None of my friends barely know who she is. They don't follow the royal family. People in America didn't even know who she was until she married into the royal family. People know that she married Princess Diana's son, and that's probably the extent of what they know about her. There's a very small group of people who know, oh, they were on Oprah and they said the, the mean old royal family was racist. Oh, she's a victim. Poor lady. And that's the end of what they know about Megan. Very few people in America know who they are. Okay? Now, the Oprah Winfrey interview definitely put them more on the map and they painted them to be victims. But no one knows about the lies or the inconsistencies or all the millions of lawsuits or the manipulation that they're doing because the American people are more interested in the Kardashians and the housewives of New York City than they are in Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle was a C-level cable actress who was on Deal or No Deal and did a few seasons of Suits before she married into the royals. Again, no one even knew who she was in America before she started dating Harry. She got put on the map when she started dating Harry and she became famous for dating Harry. Just like Kate Middleton, we didn't know who she was until she married Prince William. Fair enough. But now we all know who she is. Now, people know her because, again, she's married into the royal family. But other than that, even in America, people don't know a lot about, they don't keep up with the royals. They're not top of news here. 
So the fact that people would vote for her to be president of the United States, very far-fetched. I mean, this is the same woman who couldn't get an animated series based on herself on Netflix. This is the same woman who couldn't even get invited to the Obama's birthday party. This is the same woman who put out the fake story that they were going to the Oscars. This is the same woman who gave herself a fake NAACP award to an empty audience. This is the same woman who is being sued by her sister for lying and defaming her character. This is the same woman who only made it 20 months as a senior working royal, having worked only 72 days. She didn't even make it one term as a working royal. When you get into politics, it's two to six years. She made it 20 months and worked 72 days. She didn't even make it half a term. That's what you call a quitter. She can't even sell a children's book. It's in the clearance bin in America. So you're trying to tell me that the failed cable TV actress who just had her Netflix series canceled is going to be president? Just automatically? You failed on Netflix, but I'm going to go to the White House. I'm not going to get political. But I'm just comparing apples to oranges here. Whether you liked him or not, Donald Trump was a successful businessman. He's very polarizing. He's very entertaining. He can get people to listen to him. He sold books. He had a, a hit TV show. Sold books. Had a successful business with hotels. And the man made people listen, and he was interesting to listen to. Bill Clinton, uh, you know, Ronald Reagan, Obama, no matter what your affiliation is, these are what you call people who are professional and successful politicians because they are polarizing, they're interesting, they're entertaining, people fall behind them, people believe them, they have a huge following. Meghan Markle and Harry are like the ASMR of politics. When they speak, people fall asleep. Nobody wants to hear their woke salad speeches. Do you think Harry and Meghan are going to sell out arenas the way that Trump does? The way that Obama did? The way that Ronald Reagan, in my opinion, was one of the most entertaining presidents? Again, it's not political. I'm just talking about the people. In order to lead a nation, you have to inspire them. Meghan Markle is not that person. Like I said, I don't even see her getting on the PTA at Montecito. Okay? They are the ASMR of politics. That is the most asinine thing I've ever heard in my entire life. If Megan wanted to get into politics, you have to have friends in high places with deep pockets who are willing to pay for your campaign. And she can't even get an invite to a birthday party. Do you think the Obamas are going to sit there and be like, yeah, we're going to back Megan for the White House? They would laugh her out of the room. Meghan Markle has such grandiose ideas. She really thinks she's the next Michelle Obama, Barack Obama. They really tried so hard in the Invictus Games, looking like they were marching for, a, for politics, like at the parade waving to the people, and she was merchandising those outfits and all that little PDA that they were doing. It was very weird. Why? Why were they being so affectionate with one another at this event? It wasn't about them. It was so weird. And when they came out for that speech and she gave him that big smooch, it was like they're trying to be this, but they really turned into this. Do y'all remember the time when Michael Jackson married Lisa Marie Presley? And we all did the Oprah. What? What? And they came out hand in hand at the MTV Music Awards and they gave everyone the most cringe-worthy smooch because they wanted to prove we're in love, we're real, we're a real couple. And they gave us the most awkward kiss that literally was Harry and Meghan at The Hague giving that awkward kiss. Look at us. We're so in love. Mm -hmm. Look at us. 
seriously, that was an act. It was awkward. It was fake. It was cringe worthy. If you look at the body language of these two, it doesn't add up. It looked forced. It looked rehearsed and it was for the cameras. They were literally trying to be like the Obamas and they turned into Michael Jackson and Lisa Marie. I'm sorry, but you can't unsee it. I can't unsee it. Every time I see this photo, that's exactly what I think of. It's creepy. She had her lobster claw out and see, we're so happy. We're so in love. Smile for the camera. Vote for me. You know, no, you're not fooling anybody with this fake PDA. Like I said, they have really missed their golden opportunity to do ASMR. In my opinion, they should do their political talks with ASMR. They are the ASMR of politics, putting one voter to sleep at a time. Hi, I'm Megan, and welcome to the Archetypes Feminist Podcast, where we're going to put you to sleep one person at a time and talk about the most out-of-touch, archaic feminist issues that is affecting young women today. It's like they missed a golden opportunity. The Harkles doing their political ASMR 1995. Get your copy today on HSN. You can't fall asleep. I literally fell asleep just pretending to be her. But there's absolutely no way that anyone in America thought, yes, yes, we, we, we think Megan would be a really great uh, solution for America. Because according to this article, uh, many people don't have faith that Joe Biden will be elected again, and they think for the Democratic Party, it should definitely be a woman. And apparently, according to this poll, they put her ahead of Kamala Harris and right behind Michelle Obama and Hillary Clinton. Yeah, this was a PR piece, guys. This was made up. There's absolutely no way that Meghan Markle would ever be in the top. So according to this hilarious PR fluff, uh, political poll. They said the preferred 2024 female Democratic candidates, of course, Michelle Obama at 39%, Warren 9%, Meghan Markle 17%, Harris, Kamala Harris at 11, AOC 11, and Clinton at 13. So what do you think? Do you guys agree with this poll? I think that's the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. Um, again, I think Donald Trump has a way bigger chance than Markle will ever will. Again, politics is a very cutthroat environment. You know, they have a lot of those campaigns, those smear campaigns. It would be so easy for whatever candidate was running against Megan for any political office that she chose her reputation would be trash in five minutes. Just go to any royal YouTuber's channel. We have tons of information about, oh, the 13 lies and inconsistencies, lying under oath, she's being sued for defamation. I mean, there's seriously so much information about Megan. It would literally be like candy to her component. We would literally be handing the election to her opponent because she's not liked. And the facts are all there. Super Google search, very easy to find. There's no way even if she got on a ticket that she would win an election because people have to vote for you. You know what I mean? There's absolutely no way that people voted for her. Do they only have four choices? And do they just kind of put from highest to lowest? I really doubt people thought, oh, I want to put Megan in there. Yep. No, this is a fake article. It's hilarious. Again, the PR team is definitely trying to churn out a whole bunch of positive PR pieces to kind of pick up the pieces of their pearl disaster. So what do you guys think of these stories that are churning around about Pearl being possibly picked up by ITV and Meghan Markle? who's going to be the next president of the United States but can't sign a trademark application. Leave me your comments, guys, down below. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. And please make sure you stay tuned for the RDT Family Extras. Thank you and have an awesome and amazing day.
Bye guys. Hey guys. Um, so if you're here, welcome to the RDT Family Extras. Uh, I do have a blog if you're not aware, so please go over to the Royal Daily Tea, check out my blogs. I have some new blogs for you, and I will be dumping a whole bunch more this weekend. If you could do me a really big favor and go over and leave me a comment on my blog post. Nobody has commented on my blog post. It would tickle me silly if you did. Also, make sure to enter the 10K giveaway. We have around 100 submissions. The contest ends on Thursday with the winners being announced on Friday. I'm given a copy of the, Her Majesty, Her Life and Pictures from Town and Country. Two winners will get a chance to win this beautiful coffee table book. So please make sure the link is in the description. I will be announcing the winners on Friday. Friday. It's open worldwide. Anyone can enter. So I hope that you will enter for your chance to win one of these lovely books. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have an amazing day. And please enter the giveaway because I really, really, really want you to win. Thanks guys and have an awesome and amazing day. Bye guys.